Hey everybody, yeah, I'm back with a new product filming tutorial. This product video is a new challenge for me. I can't do the usual regular cinematography today. I definitely need to do it especially and uniquely. Therefore, I decided to use only one light source and I also have to build some kind of device to levitate product or ingredients in the frame. Let's take a look at the final video first. I hope you enjoyed because I haven't seen it yet and you are ready to find out how it was created. So the product in the frame is a completely transparent perfume bottle. The product's materials is a very important thing because it will depend on how the light will spill on it and uh, how it will look at the video. During the pre-production stage I got that the main color of the final video will be green, because the packing of the perfume itself and the colors of the brand is green. That's why I bought sheets of green paper from the regular art store to use as a background. Then I found the style of the future video, it should be a dynamic and contrast visual picture. The product should emerge from the shadows and go back into it. There also should be a lot of water in the frame to focus the viewer's attention on the freshness of the product. After that, everything I can manipulate in the front of you as a viewer is just a picture. Through the screens of your phones and displays you can see only the picture, but you can't smell it. Can't you? Or can you? Also, I need water not only for aesthetic, but also for practical purposes. As I mentioned, I want to use only one light source in this video. Therefore, the water will help me to illuminate the product and reflect the exciting light in the frame, making the product video more aesthetic and atmospheric. By the way, let's dive more in details on the what light source I will use today. I recently received a brand new Godox ML60 light and now there will be a short video that I shot while I'm packing it. I was pleasantly surprised by the complete uh, packing of this tiny light. It fits perfectly in a small carrying bag. The first thing I noticed was the short velcro straps at the back next to the handles. At first I didn't understand what is it for, uh, because uh, it wasn't at the back of my other light previously. And then I got that it's a great solution for transporting accessories such as softbox, because it's necessary for product and tabletop filming. Previously, during transportation, I had to put the salt box at the top at the back between the handles and it often fell out of there. Now I can simply attach the salt box using these velcro straps and no worries at all about something will be lost at the transportation. Great solution Godox, respect for it. Okay, let's take a look inside of this bag and understand what we will be working with. Here we have a light itself, a switching adapter, battery, base plate, attachment for the stand slash hand holder, dish and this velcro V-mount attachment for the switching adapter. Also I have a remote control. It doesn't come with a light kit, but it will be useful for me because I'm sure that in the future I will be able to set up this light at heights or in hard to reach places. Therefore, in order to climb stairs to change the necessary light settings, it's better to do it using this little helper. I put it in the mesh compartment with a long shoulder strap and two wires for connecting the battery base plate. One is short, the other is long. Ok, let's try to make the first setup for this shoot. For this we need to take a piece of glass and make the borders for it. I will use regular office tape, put a green background at the rotating platform, then glass and add some water. 
it's necessary to check that water doesn't leak anywhere. Next, we need to prepare the product for shooting. I noticed that there is a small sticker on it that can be seen in the video. So I peel it off and wipe the bottle from the glue. Today I will use Fujifilm X-T4 camera that can record 240 frames per second, Compidium uh, for the contrast and clear image. As you can see, everything is perfectly installed uh, and thanks to the Velcro V-mount attachment to the C-stand, the switching adapter doesn't lie on the floor uh, and in the tight space in which I usually shoot, I don't have to stumble over it right now. As you can see, it has uh, only three buttons. On and off button, two turn knobs with ability to press. Uh, it can select the light intensity, change fun mode on or off, add FX modes and remote control connection settings. Dimming step increment 1%, it's nice, because in product photography it's important to set the light brightness as accurately as possible. This light fixture is a daylight white balance. Now, this suits me completely, because in 99% of my works I use daylight balanced light fixtures. For product photography I'm used to using soft boxes and octo boxes. ML60 is a very small size and it has mini bones mount and I have for it a miniature softbox with a mini bones mount ADS60S by Godox. A common problem in my product photography was I used large octoboxes. I used to shape the light all the time and now I have a smaller size octobox. It installs in few seconds and comes with a grid that allows to shape and direct soft light to the desired part of the frame. Let's set the main and only light uh, overhead and leave the green background. I will add white uh, bounce board uh, so that tiny reflections appear on the glass bottle of perfume. Pour water on the glass under the product and see what happens. Ok, through a transparent bottle of the perfume in the reflection of the water we see the an illuminated background uh, that is combined with the main colors of the uh, packing and the brand of the product we shoot today. I want the rain to be the main practical effect in this video. To make this effect alive, I made several holes in the regular plastic packing from some regular equipment. Then I will pour water in it and shake it. Then the water will uh, drip through holes and uh, imitate raindrops. Ok, we already have a few takes, so let's check them out. The raindrops effect looks believable, but the green background is not what I expect. It seems to me that uh, there is too much green in the shot and it all resembles a typical green screen. As it if, uh, was filmed on a green screen and somebody uh, forgot to delete it. Mm, this is too much, uh, I think I need to make a decision either uh, to fix the overall look or finish filming today. I found solution. I completely ditched the green background uh, which was lit by the Godox ML60 and reflected in the water. In the place of this background I set the light source itself. It has the white silk or nylon, I don't know, uh, all over the softbox. I dim it down with 35% brightness. Uh, it's evenly lit and reflect looks perfectly at the water. The green color of the product remained due to the background that lies under the glass with water. Let's compare these two pictures. This visual style looks better, I think it's worth to continue in the same lighting setup, only changing the angles and composition of the frame. I want to shoot multiple takes uh, when a drop falls on a product, uh, I think it will probably be the beginning of the video. Right, it will be the first drop uh, from which the rain begins and then the storm. I will use regular A4 paper as a bounce board cause it will be close up.
We spent a little time on this more than I thought because uh, someone threw a drop from a great height and uh, it was difficult to get to the required point, but we did it. I also saw the cycles on uh, water surface uh, and the logo starts to sparkle when a drop falls by. It's nice effect uh, and I think it can be used in the final editing. I think the shot will be if you threw the product into the water. It's lightweight and by the water splash plus 240 frames per second, it should look stylish. It's not the first take, but looks nice. I decided to experiment as much as possible and move away from original shot list. The perfume bottle we are shooting has a logo engraved. The logo itself is a little bit deeper than the bottle. What happens if you pour some water into it and try to blow it off? We have a great logo opening. Initially the logo is not visible due to the water. After Simon blows off the water, we see the logo. Nice trick. Also, I think we can throw the one drop into the logo itself. Maybe something nice will come of it. Simon have idea to stick our product to the regular office tape and drag perfume through the water. Tape is not visible underwater and the product seems to move along the surface of the water and leave traces behind. It's great to have creative people in the team who will give an incredible idea and in a simple way you can take an interesting shot. I want to experiment a little more with the light and take more creative rainy shots. ML60 comes with a dish, I think I can put a whiteboard above the product and bounce the light of it. By moving the light uh, from left to right, I can achieve dynamic light and capture the perfect moment uh, when the drops fall on the product. It can be either the opening or the closing take in the final video. Or it can be somewhere in the middle and starts from the dark, then light and dark. I took off the light from the C-stand and used it in my hands for greater convenience and accuracy. The ergonomic handle is a good solution by Godox. But if I need to move this light more actively, then I can do without wires at all. This light comes with a battery plate. It supports Sony NPF9070 batteries. So by installing it on a light or on a belt, I'm not limited by the wires at all. I can experiment as much as I can. I decided to shoot the most difficult shot at the end. I want the water to hit the perfume bottle from behind and fly apart. I want there to be an explosion effect around the product. And for this purpose, me and Simon built uh, this type of device. First time I saw it at Garage Learning a film on Instagram page. Steve Gerald teach art and science of technical commercial filmmaking there. I got that if I slightly modify this device, that it would be the perfect for my purposes. So, thank you Steve for sharing your experience and knowledge. I started by drawing a sketch of our future device. Someone corrected it, of course. We discussed how this would work in theory and started building. It's great that Simon has a workshop in which he cut out some parts. Because I myself would have done it for a very long time. He installed the finished parts on a C-stand and did some tests with dust and water. And it worked. First of all, we need to correctly set up the product in the frame so that it doesn't fall off or tremble at the time when the water will hit it from behind. Therefore, I will stick the bottle to the baby wall plate using a double slided silicone tape. Then I will fix it in the C stand's gobble head. Uh, it will make the product and stand more solid. Overhead light will spill the light to the green background. 
And on the sides I will add uh, a reflector and whiteboard. Just a little trick to make the engraved logo more visible. At the back of the baby wall plate I will add the white piece of paper. It will give logo more little white highlights and make it look bigger. Okay, we got the great shots of the water explosion on the product. I think it's enough experiments for today. It's good that we protect the floor because the water is everywhere. Okay, short conclusion about today's shooting. I am glad about limiting myself in light sources and using only one light fixture today. It made me experiment more with light and get great results. Anyway, ML60 by Godox will be in my each shooting light kit because it's compact, universal and bright. It's battery powered and has excellent light quality. I'm glad that Simon has built a new device that can through the liquid substances. It works quite accurately and in a few attempts I can shoot uh, the necessary take. I wish you to stay creative and accept the one light filming hashtag challenge by me. Shoot video with just one light source and tag your industry colleagues. Together we will become more creative and improve the level of product cinematography. See you next year.